we're here with Mark Doherty, the Director of Sales from Urban Grow. So, could you just tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so uh, my background is in controlled environment agriculture. Back in 2010, I started the first indoor aquaponic farm in the Northeast. From there, I segued into the cannabis industry. Uh, started doing some work there, and about eight months ago, I came on board with Urban Grow as a director of sales in the northeastern region. So I work with cannabis cultivators from Maine to Maryland, and a little bit in Florida. A little people are starting to call us from Ohio and Pennsylvania, and what we do is we supply commercial cultivation equipment and technology to the space. So and that's in lighting, that's in fertigation, that's in benching, that's in integrated pest management, and related items. So we come in, we take a look at what these grows are trying to accomplish, whether they're a brand new grow just starting out or whether they're the one that's been in operation for a little while. And we look at where we can come in and help out and then we, we supply solutions. So you're more like, like a consultant? We're not a consultant. We're, we're what they would technically call a value added retail reseller, uh, which means that we sell you products. And in buying those products, you get the service of making sure they work properly. So. Fertigation, for instance. Great companies that we work with are companies like Dosatron and Argus, but you can't just buy a Dosatron and plug it in and make it work. It needs to be engineered. We do that engineering to make sure that you're irrigating and fertigating your plants properly. Same with lighting. A lot of people say, oh, this light's gonna do a 20 or a five by five or a four by four. That's old school basement technology. That's how you look at it when you're running two lights or four lights. But once you start running 20 lights, 50 lights, 100 lights, 1,000 lights in flower, that needs to be engineered and that's what we do. So you're really focusing on big grows? No, I work with caregivers that have 20 lights in flower. Uh, we supply a lot of caregivers in Maine with integrated pest management solutions to get them onto safe uh, organic systems for controlling powdery mildew, for controlling bugs, um, and one of our products, Persidic 2, actually we sell a lot in Maine because everybody's dealing with powdery mildew. The alternative is something like Eagle 20, right? Well, Eagle 20, when it's burned, becomes cyanide. So we don't want that in a medical uh, aspect. So Prosidic 2 can be used late in flower and not kill anybody. So we'd much rather get them on products like that. So I, I work with anybody and anybody that's in a legal market. So caregivers in Maine are part of one of the greatest legal markets in the United States. So we absolutely work with them. I've got guys that are running 20 or 30 PL lights with a company that we sell lighting for uh, in their caregiver grows. And then I've got big grows that are running a thousand lights. So what motivated you to get involved in the cannabis industry? Oh, I, like I told you a little bit before, I started out in aquaponics. I had a, a vegetable farm running aquaponics and I did that for about three and a half years. That sort of segued into doing some consulting, just in designing those types of systems. And then I was actually approached by a company in Canada that was looking at growing cannabis. And so that's what really segued me into the, into the cannabis industry proper. Um, but then uh, about uh, two years ago it started, I went through a, a personal experience that really solidified where I want to be in this industry and how I want to affect it. My wife was actually diagnosed with cancer and she went through chemotherapy. And the doctors, we live in upstate New York, and the doctors that we were dealing with that administered our chemo said outright, even though there was no legal program in New York at the time, they said cannabis, of course they didn't call it cannabis, they called it marijuana. They said cannabis will uh, alleviate and control the horrific scene, symptoms that you are about to endure for the next four months of your chemo and the four months after that to recover from chemo. So how did she respond to the cannabis treatment? So, unfortunately, we live in an illegal market. We have a home, we have children. There was no legal, safe way for us to acquire cannabis at that time. Now, I was already working in the industry. I was working actually on a team that was going for a license in New York. The week that the licenses were due was the week my wife started chemo. So, I'm in Albany, New York, putting together this huge application, 1,600 pages, 10 hard copies, going to Albany with it, with my team. And she's in Utica, New York, starting chemo. And there was no legal safe way for her to acquire cannabis. You know, we could have gone to the black market, but who knows what's on it? Who knows what's in it? Are we making the problems worse? And you already, I mean, you can see how, you know, all of the pesticides and right. what can happen. So exactly. you obviously want clean medicine. Exactly, we want clean medicine. So I'm, I'm trying to get a license in New York. She's sick of back in Utica. And I'm thinking there's got to be a better way than this. And, you know, in a lot of states, there are better ways, right? A lot of states are doing it better. Um, but my role allows me to work with 60, 70, 80, 100 commercial cultivators at a time. I have a huge impact. I have a state in the Northeast, I won't say which one, 
where every ounce of legally grown cannabis is grown under a light that I sold them and I designed that room. That's a huge impact on quality, on consistency, on yield, safety, and the ability for, for patients to actually acquire that medicine in that state. You know, there are states in the Northeast right now that have so many patients, the patient to dispensary ratio is so skewed that the dispensaries can't keep flour on the shelves and the patients can't get access. We come in and we allow these, these operations to be of maximum efficiency so that they're producing the most medicine, so they're meeting that patient demand. I love that position. Wow. I love having that, that's that, so important. You know, that influence on access. And that's what it comes back to for me, is that what I do allows for greater patient access. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Thanks we really appreciate everything that you do. I appreciate it, thank you so much.